Welcome back to another mechanism tutorial. Today I'll be covering the thermoelectric boiler and the industrial turbine, multi-blocks capable of generating steam from water and steam into energy respectively. We'll need to understand the turbine later on too when we explore the fission reactor and revisit the fusion reactor, so let's just go ahead and jump right on in. So today we're first going to cover the thermoelectric boiler multi-block. We're going to use four different blocks in the construction of this. The boiler casing, the superheating element, the boiler valve, and the pressure disperser. And also, we're also going to use the pressure disperser in the turbine construction as well, so go ahead and remember that as well. We're going to make the casing with just some steel and some iron. The superheating element is made with redstone, copper ingots, and a steel casing. The boiler valve is made with casings and advanced circuit. And finally, the pressure disperser is made with some steel, some iron bars, and an enriched alloy. So the construction of the boiler is honestly relatively simple. It follows standard mechanism multi-block rules, with it being a maximum of 18 blocks cubed. My example today is really small, and honestly, I would not recommend this for any like actual design for a boiler. So, But with that in mind, let's just go ahead and jump right on and how to make this. So first, they're going to have a base of boiler cases. And in the center, go ahead and place your superheating element, or if you have multiple elements, go ahead and do that as well. Next, surround the casings with your with some uh, casings for the corners, and then you can also use casings, glass, and also a valve if you need to have multiple inputs. You'll need at least two inputs and outputs there. You can add as many layers of these as you want to increase the heating capacity, but once you've placed that, you'll need to have at least some space for water, and that's just with an empty space. So you could have a theory, you could have an example of uh, three layers here, and then two, and that'd be totally fine. So once you're finished and you have the uh, enough layers as much as you want. Go ahead and cap it off with a pressure disperser surrounded by glass and casings. And then finally, just go ahead and top it off with some casings on the top. So the thermoelectric boiler spoils water into steam using an external heat source. You can choose any method of heating that you'd like, including a resistive heater, fuel wood heaters, or even the fusion reactor itself. You can input your heat by connecting a thermodynamic heat pipe to onto any part of the casing. Input your water through the valve, and it will heat into steam. So depending on how many superheaters you have, that will actually control the maximum rate at which you can boil or steam, but don't forget how much water you can produce can also be a limiting factor. The boiler will also heat, lose heat through the environment, so make sure you're heat, um, inputting enough heat to match the amount of steam you will make. So a fusion reactor is a great way to do this. It will output a huge amounts of steam, and you can make tons of energy with the industrial turbine. Next today, we're going to talk about the industrial turbine, which is going to convert your steam into energy and, if necessary, recycle it back to water. A well-designed turbine is capable of creating millions of RF per tick, possibly surpassing the energy output of even a fusion reactor. The construction of one is going to involve a lot of different blocks, actually. You're going to need turbine casings made of steel and osmium, to form the frame of the turbine. They're gonna use uh, turbine valves to input and output to your machine. And those are gonna be made with just some casings and an advanced circuit. We're also gonna need turbine vents to complete the multi-block. And those are gonna require some more casings and an iron bar. The turbine's also gonna need rotors and blades. And those are gonna require some steel and alloy on both. The rotational complex is also gonna be needed to make your rotors work. They're gonna use some steel, some alloy, and some circuits on there as well. Electromagnetic coils will be needed for power output, and those will be made with gold, steel, and energy tablets. Finally, the saturating condenser will recycle the steam used back into water. Use some tin, steel, and a bucket for those. The turbine also follows standard mechanism multi-block rules as well, having a maximum size of 18 by 18 by 18. I'm going to go ahead and share a nice table of specific designs provided by the FTB wiki to follow for maximum efficiency in the description, but for now, let's just go ahead and take a look at the construction of one. First, you're gonna form your base structure. Go ahead and use casings for the bottom and the corners. You can use casings and glass for the respectively for the walls. And don't forget, you'll also need some valves in there as well. The structure should be hollow except for your rotors, which should be in the direct center. To place your blade, just go ahead and grab onto there. So hold on, let me grab some. And it's actually just gonna fill as you need them. So once you're finished with your rotors, go ahead and place a rotational complex on top of them. And then go ahead and surround it with pressure dispersers, which we did just learn about a couple of minutes ago. Then place your electromagnetic coils on it and make sure at least one of them is touching the complex and the rest are also connected to this specific coil. For every two rotors you'll have, you'll need at least one. Place your saturators around here up as well, uh, just on this layer as well, if you're in interested in recycling some water. Finally, cap off the turbine with casings and some turbine vents in the interior. 
You can also go ahead and place vents on this layer as well for additional venting capacity. Don't forget you'll need at least two valves somewhere on the turbine to input and output steam and power. So the turbine GUI is relatively simple to follow. You have an internal storage buffer of steam as well as some stats on how much your reactor is making. You can see the power production, the flow rate of steam going through it, and that's how much steam you're actually putting into it. You have the capacity of how much steam it can hold, and you have the max flow of how much steam you can actually put in there. You can also see that we can see our power buffer as well there, and there's also like a, a colored input of steam input, except it's so small we can't even see it represented on there. If you click on this little I, uh, I button, you can see some more information on it. You can see how, how big tank is in volume, and you can also see some uh, stats on how well your re uh, turbine was built. Like here, like I said, this isn't a great example. It's limited already. There's better ways to build it. You can also see limiting factors this way. You can see how much the turbine is capable of producing with the max amount of steam you can put in. And that's not a huge amount of power, but we can always build a better one. We can also see how much out water it can actually output. So for as much steam as you put in, it can output back into water. The fission and fusion reactor can both make great use of a turbine, and if you play your cards right, you could have more power than what a fusion reactor could yield otherwise. I'm going to have some more content coming up for version 10 coming very soon, so for now, just go ahead and stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my latest tutorial. Be sure to like the video if you learned something, and consider subscribing to find out when I post next. Let me know what you thought in the comments, I try to respond to everyone and answer questions as much as possible. And also be sure to check out my other videos like my previous mechanism tutorials or my build showcases. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all on the next video.